Okay, welcome to Darkest Dungeon. Um, it's an awesome little D&D &D meets Lovecraft economy, town building, dungeon delving game. Um, you're not going to be able to see the fantastic intro because my computer is not up to the task of both playing this game and displaying the beautiful frame rate that you would need to actually you know, understand anything or have it be intelligible. So we're just going to jump right into the game and I'll give like a breakdown of uh, the different classes and what you do and basically gameplay and stuff and why you should love this game. So I'm just going to restart a new game here. We need something properly evocative. You know, the setting takes itself very seriously. So we're going to go to Spooky Town. Very, very terrifying place. I'm going to skip this uh, intro because, like I said, the computer is not up to displaying it. I'm also having audio issues, so I can't actually play you any of the in game sound because it would just blow out your ears in comparison to the sound of my voice. But, like, already, like, look at the, the art style. It's like straight out of, it's definitely modeled on like Hellboy, uh, that style of art. We've got our two main characters. Let's get the tutorial tips. Uh, we've got our two main characters, and you can select uh, between them. You can see they've got like a set of skills here on the left hand side. You can swap them back and forth. And like the, the order of your characters is, is basically half of the game. Because each of these characters here has a particular set of skills. And on the left hand side, um, the yellow dots there will indicate which position you have to be in in order to use them. And the red dots on the right hand side tell you what the legal targets are. So for instance, um, um, Reynold here, the Crusader, he can use this smite ability uh, so long as, he, as he's in the rightmost or second rightmost position and he can only hit the first two targets, one or the other. Uh, his second ability, again, he has to be in the, in the front, in, in the front two positions, but he can hit the first two enemies with that little red line. Stunning Blow is just a different kind. Again, you can, you can start to see this trend where he really has to be in the first, uh, either in the first position or the second position. Whereas if we go to our, our buddy Dismas here, he's kind of a, a high women, like a rogue type character. He's got Open Vein, which is a, a kind of a slash attack. So again, just like Reynolds' abilities, he targets the first two. But he can do this from the first, second, or third position. Likewise, his pistol shot, now you can sort of see, okay, if he's way in the back, he can still use it. And he can target everything except the frontmost enemy with it. Grape Shot, he can only really use if he's in the middle. And he hits the first three enemies with it. It's kind of a weaker blast. And finally, he's got Take Aim. He can do this in any position. He just sort of um, um, adds to his accuracy and adds to his critical chance. And the last ability is always moving around. So you can only ever have four abilities at a time. And uh, the, the detail is really nice. Like You just hover over whatever it is, and then it will give you your base accuracy as a percentage or as a value, <clears throat> the damage modifier, and then what it does to the target. So for instance, if we hit somebody with open vein one, they're gonna bleed for two damage per round for three rounds, that kind of thing. And just the um, the presentation of the game is, is really nice. Like you have all this information um, really easily accessible. You can just click back and forth on each of your characters. It's really satisfying. And uh, you can see their gear and general crit chances or whatever. But most of the stuff that you need is is right here. You've got, if you hover over, you can see their hit points and their stress levels. And if you hit 100 stress, something terrible happens, which we won't see in the tutorial, but we'll get to eventually. Uh, but you just hover over it, and it just gives you the information right away. It's really nice. And, and then you just have to look at this bar. I've, I've barely ever looked at any of this stuff down here, to be honest, once you're actually playing the game. And how you actually play the game, so on the right hand side we have these maps, and this is our starting position, and all you do essentially when you're getting into a dungeon is you click on the room that you want to move for, uh, move towards, and then use your A and D buttons, or you can 
hold the and you click in whatever direction you want to go. And I've just walked back into the first area. Just super tech. I'm amazing at this game. No lie. So I'm going to walk forward. I'm going to continue walking forward. And all of a sudden we're going to hit an enemy of some sort. Oh no. We've been surprised. Okay. So initiative is just sort of assigned depending on what the speed of the character is. So for instance, Dismas is speed 6. This character over here is speed 3. And if we, no, oh, I don't have access to him yet, but you can then hover over Reynolds and select him, and you'll be able to see what speed it is. The higher the speed, the faster they go, obviously. So I've got a couple of options, and all you do is you just select the move, and you select what you want to do with it. Sweet. It's a pretty, pretty good start there. Enemy moves, gives me a whack load of damage and makes me bleed. And the narration, if you could hear it, would be, like, it's just really nice, like this incredibly deep-voiced, gothic gentleman narrating everything. And I'm gonna grab Smite. You get these, like, just the camera movement is really simple, but really nice and clean, makes everything, like, all dramatic. You get loot. It's D&D. &D. You know, kill people and take their stuff, <laughs> basically. So as you're walking around, you saw that, that dark kind of thing appear. Uh, as you wander through dungeons, it's, you know, it's stressful for our adventurers, so just, just being in a dungeon makes them more stressed. So you can see I've already got nine stress where I had, I started off with five or so. Dismas, even, even he's kind of feeling it, he's already at ten stress. So yeah, as, as the little tool, to, you come across these little items or interactable objects, just click on them, it gives you an option of what you want to do. So I'm going to check inside the tent and see what's there. Ooh, they've left valuables. Excellent. So most of it is loot, it's just vendor trash, you sell it for money. We have some food, but I'm not going to get into that. We should keep moving. So you see, anytime that, that thing appears there, his stress just went up by three, so can't can't linger and then once you reach the end of your corridor here as indicated in your map just either click on the door or press up and you enter the next area hey we're at the last area of our map there's no paths after here and we've got a nice, nice little boss battle though to finish off the tutorial now the the cool thing here is like they're already introducing this concept of large enemies so if you see his life bar is particularly big, but it's also, let's see if I can show this off. Well, it'll become more apparent. Okay, yeah, open vein. So I can target the first two spots on the right hand side, but if you'll notice, I can't actually select this guy at the back. That's because this dude is so large that he's actually taking up the first two enemy spots, which means, uh, you know, if you remember, the abilities that Reynolds has only target the first two spots, so he's only ever going to be able to hit this front guy. What I see a lot of people do um, in these tutorials is, like, it, it seems like they, nobody's ever played an RPG before in their lives where, you know, you pick one target, kill that target, and then move on to other stuff to minimize your damage. Minimizing damage to your team is really, really important. You basically don't have healing items, at least as far as I can... Uh, determine. The only way you can heal is really inefficiently with food and with character abilities. So you really want to minimize the amount of punishment your team takes. You cannot survive like long sustained stuff. So as you can see, I select this pistol shot and that's going to give me access to this back range guy. He's only got 12 health. And once you've selected a thing and hover over, it'll actually give you a whole bunch of details about the character and what it's... At the very bottom you can see my to hit chance is 73%, I've got a 15% crit chance. And I'm dealing between 3 and 8 damage, so there's a possibility I can just kill this guy in one shot. And... Boss! <laughs> so, so that just happened. And anytime you, your character's crit, um, there's there'll be like this rolling... Uh, this rolling reduction in stress. So anytime you crit, your whole team is going to feel way better about their whole situation. So I'm even below the stress I was when I started the game, which is fantastic. On the other hand, when an enemy is, when you're so lucky as to be uh, crit by an enemy, same thing happens, except in reverse. So 
if any one of your teammates is crit, they're going to get stressed out because they just got crit and took a whole bunch of damage. And other members of your team are randomly going to feel the burn as well. So now it's just a matter of flattening this dude. Um, I can try stunning him. But he's got, I can look at there at the bottom and see, he's got 50% stun risk. So I think I'm just going to deal just insane amounts of damage as much as possible. Try to wipe them out as quickly as, quickly as I can. Yeah, so you can see the status effect is really, oh, that's awesome. So if you hover over it, I didn't even realize this before. If you hover over that, it'll actually give you details of how many more rounds of bleed you have and how much damage it's going to deal you. So I can really make choices about that. So do I want to... Pistol shot him or open vein him? How much damage do I do? 3 to 8 damage with pistol shot, 4 to 9 damage, and I have a chance of giving him bleed, which is pretty good. So I'm going to go with that. Nice. And bleed. Excellent. I'm going to continue smiting him. He's going to get a shot. Rain of whips. Sweet doge, though. So no damage for us. Continue bleeding them. And bleeds will actually stack. Yeah, so took four damage there and just got wiped out. Awesome. Get a whole bunch of gear. Take all of that stuff. And then we've got a sweet chest we can open. Of course, it's trapped chest. So you actually don't have to... I always thought you have to, you have to open this thing. You don't. It's part of the tutorial, but you don't actually have to go there. There's nothing there. It just deals you damage for no reason. So we're going to... Well, Show it off anyway. Open the chest. It's trapped! You were warned! And then I get Blight, which is basically this game's version of Poison. But tutorial's over, so all that's going to clear as soon as I click on that. And there you go! That was the nice little tutorial level for Darkest Dungeon. And we finally make it to Hallowed Spooky Town Manor. So your characters level up, you can do a bit of details and stuff. Now, it also gives you the option to basically bone yourself. So every time, almost every time you level, you'll get these glowing masks. And what you do is you they're basically a time bomb. So you can choose to open them if you want. And if you do, then you get randomly assigned uh, traits. And they can be good traits or crappy traits. And because, you know, I might as well show them off. I'm just going to take both of them. So, great. So, Reynolds has developed Syphilis. Uh, he's less accurate. He deals less damage. And he has fewer max hit points. That's great. Super good. But he is hard-skinned, so he has just a base plus 5% protection. So, I guess, I'm assuming damage, damage reduction. So, he's just hardy as heck. So, he's got Syphilis of the entire body. He's, built, he's developed a hardened crust, apparently. Some sort of uh, exoskeleton. Dismiss is still necromania, um, which great. Um, I don't. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I'm really kind of terrified. And uh, he's an amateur armorsmith, so he's oh well, wow. So costs to upgrade his equipment are minus twenty percent, which is awesome because that stuff is really expensive. So I mean, I guess I'm okay with his fascination with corpses because. This game. This game. <laughs> now we actually get to see our town. For reals, like. And uh, I really like... This is this is the economy that gives you a quick like, update of what you're doing. You see your team on the right-hand side. Anytime you can right-click on them to get details, see what their quirks are. Um, which all change different things. If you hover over, you can see you have a, each class has a set of seven skills that they can possibly choose from. So seven combat skills that they can choose from, and each of them indicates sort of. Um, well, I'm actually deactivating them. Um, once you've highlighted them, it'll show you all of the positions that you can use your skills from. And so if I turn all of these off, no positions. If I turn all of them on, you can see, okay, so all of the skills I currently have can only be used 
the right. So this is a really simple way to explain stuff, and it also shows the preferred targets. So if we go to Dismas, for instance, his looks a little different. So the the brighter the glow, essentially, is the most the more skills he can use from those positions. And if he has you know, just one skill or two skills that he can use from the front, and one or two skills he can use from the back. And mostly he's hitting the second target. Like that's the one he can hit with most skills, and everything else has kind of a a minor uh, subset that he can do. Camping skills not really important at this point. But they get into uh, things as as you delve into deeper and deeper dungeons. And the town, like this town thing, is really cool. I mean, it, it works a lot like. Um, some of those free-to-play uh, Facebook games where you have a castle or a manor. This is basically your economy piece. So eventually the town, like as you delve deeper into the dungeons, you unlock different uh, spots. Right now we just have the graveyard, which shows us uh, who's died. Got creepy guy over there. And the stagecoach, which is our recruiting grounds. The only free thing in this game are our heroes. So... <laughs> Theoretically, I mean, if you're okay with just party wiping every time, uh, you just come back to the stagecoach and there's a hapless bunch of victims totally happy to join your, your ridiculous quest to uh, take back the manor from uh, your relations' uh, awful beast that you've unleashed, of course, as you do. Um, yeah, you just click on them, right-click to look what they Look what they're like. Each of them have their own traits. They have different set of skills. So uh, the Seeker Vestal, any kind of a, any of the Vestals uh, tend to have like they're your basic like D and D cleric. So uh, they've got some ranged magic, some stun effects. Uh, but the really important stuff is they can heal. They've got a party heal and a single person heal, which this person doesn't actually have. So depending on like the the skills that they come with are completely ran randomized. The, uh, the quirks that they come with are completely randomized. Deviant Tastes is pretty amazing. You're actually not allowed to visit the brothel. <laughs> they know your name. They know what you do. Um, the camping skills are all out of there. Each person has kind of their unique set of resistances and class bonuses, which I've never seen because I'm not far along uh, enough in the game. And each, uh, each of these town buildings, so, because they're free, just, just grab them. I mean, got room if I can. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see how many total heroes you can have. So eventually, uh, you know, as you fill these up and grab them to your roster, that's the only limit to the amount of people you have. The, again, they're completely free, so take them if you have free spots. Why not? Um, each of the buildings in the town has upgrades. So delicious. Um, that do different stuff. So, for instance, you can increase the number of available heroes to three. Rather than just having two to choose from, you'll get three. Um, the second part of the upgrade chain is essentially hero barracks. So, right now our roster is uh, nine heroes total, but if we take this upgrade, it's going to increase it to 11. So, we can have more maximum uh, heroes available to us. And uh, that's essentially where I'm going to. Uh, end this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if I can figure out audio things and uh, get the sound to balance out, I'll, I'll record some more. You can hear the awesome soundtrack and narration. But for now, thanks for watching.